Hey YouTubers, so today we're going to be having a go at fixing this Whirlpool microwave. It's done good service, uh, it's been around for about 15 years and uh, previously, one time before it failed and I changed the magnetron after a lot of diagnostics and determined that whilst the transformer was working and I think I might have changed the capacitor that it stopped heating. However, this time, every few seconds or so, it blows the fuse. So I'll just show you where the fuse is. So this is the fuse on this microwave. So it's a slow blow 20 amp fuse, just sitting there on the circuit board. And that blows every time you turn the microwave on. So the bits I did determine are working fine is the fan cleaned all that up and that's working really well. You can see the fan's working, spinning pretty freely and powering up okay. If you disconnect the primary, everything was fine. Connect the primary up and immediately the fuse would blow. Didn't matter what was happening with the magnetron or with the capacitor. Put a new capacitor, new diode, still the same. So I picked up this Panasonic microwave. Still working fine. And the plan here is to take the transformer out, probably reuse the cap as well, and connect to the uh, existing magnetron and see if we can get things rolling. Okay, so we've whipped everything out of the Panasonic, taken out the cap, the diode, and the transformer. And I'll show you what they're looking like on the Whirlpool. We'll prep the uh, transformer area. So we've got the power lead still coming in just the same, got a bit of flex on those. I've put the Panasonic cap in because it's using smaller terminals. The capacitor on the Whirlpool, which I can't find right now, was using the quarter inch terminals, so they're slightly bigger. And obviously the leads are terminated like that, so because I'm going to be using a mix, I'm going to re-terminate some of those leads. Seems the small ones are the more modern. This is a, another spare cap I've got with the more modern terminals on. And then if we... So it should be good as long as I get to all my connections in the right place. And the one thing I was going to do was just screw the Panasonic transformer in here, but unfortunately it's a real pain. It's got a completely different layout. So we're going to be making some adjustment. So... This is the... Whirlpool transformer. It's got a really nice bed plate on it. It clips in beautifully at the bottom. These weigh about five kilos. That's why my crow is so heavy. We've got the power cables in on the right on the primary. We've got the heating coil coming off on the right hand side here. On the left hand side here along with the secondary. So the secondary earth, you can just see they're terminated to the actual main core of the transformer. So this is heating and the secondary and heating. Going back up to the cap. So this is the Panasonic transformer and first glance you go, hmm, you got no chance. So we've got the secondary coming off here on the terminal, we've got a diode into the cap, we've got the cap wire up to the um, magnetron, we've got the other cap wire and we've got the other magnetron wire. So looking at that I tried it in and it just really wouldn't fit. So then after having a bit of a think about it, and a bit more looking, I realised that if you put it on its side, you can see it's actually the same transformer as far as the actual main uh, core is concerned. And then if you turn it, you can see that you can get it reasonably lined up. We've got the um, power terminals on the right now. We've got the um, secondary on the left. However, we've got the small coil at the back, so the input coil uh, at the back, the primary, and the secondary at the front. So then turning it again, through another 180 degrees. So I just try not to drop that on the heating element. We end up with primary on the right. Heating coil on the right, single wire, 
I won't bend that, it's a really stiff one. Uh, heat and coil on the left by itself, and secondary on the left. So it's looking good. The next challenge will be taking off this plate, taking off this plate, and making this transformer look a lot more like this transformer does. Okay, so now to extend these cables up, um, I found this, this is the core wire. So this is about 0.13 millimeter, and this is just some household electrical 2.5 millimeter. So you, I measured those both up, pretty similar. So we're gonna be using the red to extend that, and I think we might use the white just to extend up the secondary, just because it's a bit similar to this one then, so keeps the color scheme pretty similar in the whirlpool. Okay, let's get those connected up. Okay, wire extension's finished. So we've got the uh, two heating coils and the secondary. And now on this side, the same. We've got the heat shrink, uh, sorry, the uh, protector tubes over. And reasonably happy with the crimps. They seem pretty firm. I'll go with that for today. So uh, now to move on to the plates. Let's see how we go. Okay, I was going to grind these off, but I decided it's going to make too much of a mess. So we're going for a uh, small pilot hole and a 12 bell drill. Just try and drill them away. We'll see how we go. <clears throat> I'll show you what that looks like. Just a question of getting the depth just about right. I'll give that a go and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, with a bit of careful drilling and hammering, got this one lifted up, got it off on the back. So the next time I'll show you come off. So that transformer is nicely prepped. Now just before we take the other one off, I'm just going to draw around where that transformer was positioned, just using a sharpie, just so that we can get the new one. Nicely in the same position. Not that it really matters, but makes it nice and neat. Right, so we're trying to get this plate off without bending as much. Okay, so we've gone for a lot more drilling on this one because I really don't want the plate to get damaged and I don't mind the transformer. Having a few uh, holes in it. Doesn't sound like it's quite there yet. I think we'll go for a bit more drilling. Certainly sounds interesting. Okay, so let's have a look now. Beautiful. cleaned up a little bit and uh, get the welder out. Okay, so we're pretty ready to go. Uh, got that all mounted up, just got a couple of little magnets holding it in place. Pretty happy with that. I think we'll just go straight for a uh, couple of welds on those old spots and see if we can make it stick. Okay. Okay, we got those down. Not very happy with my welding skills there, but good enough. And let's face it, this baby ain't going anywhere. Okay, just had to fix that one up a bit. I think now time for a little bit of a spray tidy. Done. 
Okay, so now to get things reassembled and back together. Okay, so hopefully you can see transformer's gone in. I got very lucky when I put that position of that transformer because it did slip over a bit and it nearly stopped that foot from working. So I've got the primary on, the secondary is connected up. Connected up just like the Panasonic, so I've got the diode. I've connected the second diode to the cap. Not sure why they've put that one on there. I've got the uh, main secondary to the cap for the pumping. And then I even put on the ferrite that they had up to the actual magnetron. I've got the FA and the F connected as per it was on, certainly on the whirlpool. And I think we're ready to give it a spin. So let's get the cover on and see what happens. You can see my nice uh, grindy weldy on the transformer. There. Okay, let's see how we go. Okay, so here goes for the nano truth. So good. Beautiful. Jobs are good. Time for a clean, and I think we're done.